In the third grade, my homeroom teacher decided to read our class a book so emotionally devastating, I'm making an animated recap of it years later. So, uh, thanks for that, Mrs. Ryans. Really appreciate it. The book in question is called The Miraculous Journeys of Edward Tulane, and I think it came out in 2005. And the 2000s, man, in general, they were just a very interesting time for children's books because the way I remember it, most of them coming out during that time were either drawn or written really sad. If you went to elementary school during this time period, your reading options were either something soul-crushingly sad or, um, I don't know, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Um, I reread the book recently, and in my opinion, it still holds up pretty well. I mean, it's just as sad as the last time I read it, so that has it going for itself. And uh, if you're wondering how sad this book is, this was written by the same lady who did these, so um, do with that knowledge as you will. Anyways, on to the story. So, the story is about, of course, Edward Tulane, a china rabbit who is owned by a little girl named Abilene. Edward and Abilene live in this big fancy house along with Abilene's parents and Abilene's French grandmother, Pellegrina. So uh, it's safe to say that our boy Ed is living that good life. Edward is actually pretty self-centered and thinks very highly of himself at this point. He always takes Abilene's love for him for granted, never appreciates it. Uh, so I already hear a bunch of you guys asking, is Edward technically alive? The answer to that is yes and no. So he is the main character, and we do get to hear his inner monologues, but it's not like a Toy Story type of setup where once Abilene leaves the room, he just gets up and starts interacting with the other toys. Uh, no, no, no. He very much needs Abilene and other people to like move him around from place to place. Uh, he can, however, have like psychic conversations with like the other toys in the room, so... Uh, that's never really explained very well, but yeah. Edward Tulane is a very self-centered and very selfish toy rabbit, and he does not care that Abilene loves him because love does not matter to a china rabbit. So one night, uh, Pellegrina is tucking Abilene and Edward in for bed, and Abilene goes, Pellegrina, can you read us a story? Oui, Michelle. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess. She was a cold-hearted bitch who was lewd to everyone who tried to love her. One day, she was being extra lewd to an old witch, and the witch transformed the princess into a pig. And then she was eaten. The end! What the f- So the next day, the family go on a trip to London on the RMS Queen Mary. You know, the one in Long Beach. Pellegrina decides not to come because the French and the English famously hate each other's guts. Edward is still a little shaken up from last night's bedtime story because he has the inkling suspicion that Pellegrina meant that story for him, but then he quickly brushes it off. So most of the voyage is actually Abilene introducing Edward to other passengers and other little girls on that trip fawning over Edward, which Edward very much loves because, you know, he loves attention. Then these two brothers show up and see all this going on. Uh, they take Edward from Abilene, undress him, and they start throwing him around like a basketball, which makes Abilene very mad. So much so that when one of the brother goes to throw Edward, uh, she full on body slams him, which causes Edward to go flying overboard. Edward slowly descends onto the sea floor. Uh, he's just kind of stuck there for a while, and while he's down there, he's mostly complaining about how long it's taking for Abilene to come get him. But then when he realizes that Abilene isn't probably gonna do that, uh, he thinks about Pellegrina and blames her for all of this, even though she wasn't even on the trip, man, come on. So yeah, Edward is down there for a very long time, almost a year. But then Edward gets swept up by the strong current which causes him to go flying to the surface where he's discovered by a fisherman named Lawrence who then gifts Edward his wife, Nellie. Well, this isn't what I'm used to, but I'm just glad I'm not in that gross, smelly ocean anymore. I'll name her Susanna. Wait, what? So Edward is now Susanna and lives in the home of Lawrence and Nellie. At first, she's a little annoyed that she has nothing to wear but these frumpy looking dresses, but she grows quickly accustomed to them. 
and she even finds herself enjoying life with Lawrence and Nellie in a way she never did with Abilene. Um, Whenever Nellie tells her stories about her kids and her family, Susanna finds that she's actually paying attention to them instead of just glazing over like she did with Abilene. And at night, Lawrence would sit Susanna on his lap and point out the stars and the constellations and tell her their names, which she likes. And whenever they're eating, they have this like high chair set up for Susanna, so she's like always included in the conversation, so she's very much a part of the family. Um, and it's like this for a while, until... Lawrence and Ellie's daughter, Lolly, comes for a visit and is immediately jealous of Susanna and the attention she's getting. So much so that while her parents are sleeping, Lolly steals Susanna and throws her in the dump. Which, imagine being so insecure you're jealous of a toy that your parents are showing the slightest bit of affection to. But, yeah. Susanna is clearly very angry about this. She liked the life she was living with Lawrence and Ellie, and now she was sitting in a pile of trash far away from them. So it was like when she was stuck on the seafloor, except much worse. Susanna sits idly for a very long time, and to keep herself going, she just imagines all sorts of ways on how she could get revenge on Lolly. And then she starts thinking about Abilene, and then Lawrence, and then Nellie. And then she thinks about Palagrina again, and then blames her for all of this again, even though, come on man, she's not even in the story anymore. So after spending a substantial amount of time in the dump, Susanna is eventually found by a dog named Lucy who brings her back to her owner, a hobo named Bull, who takes a liking to Susanna and decides to keep her. Y'all one of us now, Malone. So Malone the rabbit joins Bull and Lucy on their adventures, which is basically just jumping around from one place to the other. But much like with Lawrence and Nellie, Malone becomes very adapted to this type of lifestyle, and he even finds himself becoming very fond of both Bull and Lucy. So much so that he actually lets Lucy rest her head on his body whenever she's sleeping. Malone becomes somewhat of a therapy toy for the other passers-by they meet on their journeys. They start telling him stories about their loved ones, and how much they miss them, and how far away they are. And it reminds Malone of the people he's left behind, namely Lawrence, Nellie, and Abilene. But for the most part, life with Bull and Lucy is a very enjoyable one, and they're together for almost seven years, but then of course the plot happens. While the trio are stowing away in a train car, they're discovered by the train conductor, who starts beating down on Bull and Lucy. Malone is very upset over this. He wants to get up and help them, but he's an inanimate object, so there's not very much he can do. The conductor spots Malone and tosses him off the moving train. Fortunately for Malone, he lands on a very soft, grassy patch, and the next morning, he's discovered by a farmer lady who decides to repurpose Malone as a scarecrow to protect her crops. Malone is still very traumatized over last night's events. Uh, he wants to get back to Bull and Lucy. He imagines himself growing wings so he can fly back to them and protect them. But at the end of it all, he just feels very defeated. He imagines the crows flying around him to actually be Pallagrina, mocking him. Ha! You stupid rabbit! That's what you get for having no love in your heart! And then later that night, he imagines the stars coming down and making fun of him. Oh my god! What is that? You are dumb, unattractive, overweight, unworthy, untalented. I don't like you. I'm about to beat this bitch up. Which is really sad because the stars used to give him comfort, but now they're down here bullying him. So yeah, a very low point for our friend. Fortunately for Malone, his scarecrow gig doesn't last very long because the next day, one of the farmhands, a young boy named Bryce, takes a liking to Malone and decides to steal him while the farmer lady isn't looking. Now, the reason for this is because Bryce wants to give Malone to his younger sister Sarah Ruth, who is very sick with tuberculosis. Bryce and Sarah Ruth are both dirt poor, and they live in this dilapidated shack along with their absentee father who is very abusive and almost never home. This part of the story is probably the bleakest, and it's usually when the waterworks start happening for most people, if they haven't happened yet. Sarah Ruth renames Malone Jangles, and just like before, Jangles grows very attached to his new owner. But his time with Sarah Ruth is cut short because her condition starts to deteriorate, and eventually she grows weaker and weaker, even to the point where she starts coughing up blood. Oof, sorry about that. No tears. No tears. So yeah, Sarah Ruth's condition gets even worse, and eventually she succumbs to it.
Sarah Ruth dies. Bryce and Jangles are both very distraught. The only reason Bryce stayed home was for Sarah Ruth, and now that she was gone, there was literally nothing keeping him from staying. So he decides to take Jangles and head off to Memphis to become a street performer. And as fun as that sounds, do not let your guard down. If you thought the young girl dying from a disease was sad, wait till you hear what happens next. So Bryce and Jangles arrive in Memphis. Bryce converts Jangles into a makeshift marionette and dances him around while playing the harmonica. And first of all, any kid who can do that now would probably end up on America's Got Talent, but I guess people back then weren't as appreciative because he makes very little money from all of this. And to make matters worse, whenever Bryce is doing his thing, everyone is being super mean and negative, and it just causes Bryce to like break down crying on the streets and god damn it who wrote this book again kate di camillo kate why you gotta do this to my boy bryce bryce takes jingles and what little money they made to a nearby diner to get some food he orders a big meal but when it comes time to pay the bill it turns out he doesn't have enough money and that makes the chef angry like very angry Bryce starts dancing Jangles around to try and cool the situation, but it does not work. So Edward wakes up, but to his surprise, he's completely sentient now. He can move his arms and legs, and he can even talk now. He turns to the side and sees his original home where he lived with Abilene. Then, everyone he had ever loved comes out to greet him. It's very much similar to the ending of Titanic. At first, Edward is very happy to see all these familiar faces, but then he looks around and asks, Where's Sarah Ruth? Bryce points up to the sky, and there she is. Sarah Ruth is now one of the constellations. At first, Edward is very sad because of how far away she is, but then he sprouts a pair of wings, which makes him very happy because now he can fly to Sarah Ruth. Just as he's about to do that, everyone catches him and begs him to stay. Malone, don't leave us so soon. Edward, please stay with us. I couldn't bear to lose you again. The whole thing makes Edward very emotional, but then Edward wakes up for real. Edward wakes up in a toy store. His head is glued back together and he's all cleaned up. So basically what had happened was, after the chef bashed Edward's head in, Bryce takes Edward to a nearby toy store to have him fixed. The guy who runs the toy store agrees, but under one condition, that once he fixes Edward, Edward gets to belong to him. Bryce agrees, and Edward is restored. Bryce actually pops up one last time, but only to say goodbye to Edward. And this is like the first time he's getting a proper goodbye from one of the people he's loved, so it's even more gut-wrenching. While at the toy store, Edward gets bullied by the other toys, but he's emotionally burned out at this point and he doesn't really care. When one extra bitchy doll starts dunking on him and telling him that no one will ever love him, he shuts her down real quick with these words. I have already been loved. I have been loved by a girl named Abilene. I have been loved by a fisherman and his wife, a hobo and his dog. I have been loved by a boy who played the harmonica and a girl who died. Don't speak of me about love. I have known love. My god. Edward is in that toy store for years and years and years. But then one day, a little girl and her mother enter the shop. The little girl spots Edward immediately and takes an instant liking to him. She goes to show her mother Edward, but then when Edward sees her face, he's in immediate shock because in a last minute plot twist, it's revealed that the mother is actually Abilene who's now all grown up and has her own family. Edward gets super emotional, and that's where the story ends. In my opinion, it still holds up pretty well. Like I mentioned before, it's still as emotional as the first time I read it, so yeah, that has it going for itself. Um, 
So this story is actually very popular with like small theater companies since I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube promoting like stage adaptations of this book. But the one thing I'm surprised hasn't happened yet is a film adaptation. I at the very least hope I live long enough to see a miraculous journey of Edward Tulane movie. Ideally speaking it has to be animated and the companies I personally want to be working on it are either Pixar or Leica. Everyone else can uh, get the hell out of here. Illumination? How about Illumination? Sony? Not in my multiverse. DreamWorks? Keep your furries and your dance parties away from my boy Edward. I saw what you guys did to the bad guys and I do not approve.